Mm -hmm. So for tonight, you don't need too much, just a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil, something colorful to draw or play with, um, just whatever you feel comfortable with. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Yes, I am. Oh, I'm gonna let Karen in. I'm gonna share my screen. I'm gonna let Joanna in. <laughs> And I'm going to share my screen. There we go. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. John 12, 23 to 32. Now, I want to start off our time, um, and if everybody can make sure that you're muted, that will help a little bit. You know what? I'm going to... So I want to start our time with um, some scripture and prayer. Got something going on, so hold on. I'm gonna stop my sharing and see if we can. Hmm. Okay. Prayers. All right. All right. Back to it. So many of you may be familiar. Uh, I've recommended the app Lectio 365, and I highly, highly recommend it as a way to build in uh, a prayer practice of meditation on scripture throughout or throughout the week. And they just added, in addition to their morning prayer, they just added an evening prayer. So it's a really, really great app. If you haven't checked that out, like do 365. But I'm gonna read something from Saturday, from yesterday. It just really coincided really well with what I had planned to talk about today. So we're gonna start with just a brief time of prayer, um, listening to this or, or considering this reflection. People will come from east and west and north and south and will take their places at the feast in the kingdom of God. Let's take a moment to reflect on the Great Commission. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Matthew 28, 16 to 20. And then they write, ever since Adam and Eve chose ambition over obedience, God has been on a mission. From the moment sin and death entered creation, God's plan to break their power came into being. Over centuries, he revealed himself first to a family and then to a nation. And into this nation came Jesus, sometimes called the second Adam, who chose obedience over ambition. And through his death and resurrection, God's mission reached its climax. The way to God is open. And in this moment captured by Matthew, Jesus commissions his disciples to join in with the next phase of God's mission, to carry the good news of what's happened to all the nations. We are included in Jesus's commission. We are disciples commanded to make disciples, but we don't do it alone. 
In the book of Acts, Jesus promised that God's spirit would accompany and empower us. So now let's pause and invite the Holy Spirit to fill us again. Who are we discipling? We ask ourselves. Like the Apostle Paul, who are we inviting to follow us as we are following Christ? Who am I teaching to obey Jesus' commands, either literally or with the example of my life? Let's pray for them now. Now let's return to the passage. And we open our ears to hear your word, God, and our hearts to yield to your will once again. Then the 11 disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And again, they write, the Jewish ambition was for a free and restored Israel. But Jesus revealed that God's ambition is far greater. The invitation to forgiveness and spirit-fueled life is not spirit-fueled life to the full is not just for them, but for all nations. Even with this command, if I read the book of Acts, I learn that it took the disciples a while to understand this and to join in with God's mission beyond the boundaries of Judaism. I ask myself, am I willing to listen to the call of Jesus? to make disciples today, even if it takes me beyond the boundaries of my culture, my comfort zones, or even my nation. And then we can pray, Jesus, I thank you that the Great Commission comes with an even greater promise that you will be with me to the very end of the age. With your presence giving me strength, I choose obedience. Give me the courage to disciple everyone I meet. So I wanna share with you some thoughts and then we'll have a time of creative reflection on scripture. You know, it was actually probably a year ago, almost to the date, uh, maybe a week earlier, we met once after having been displaced for several months because of the fire, and then we went online. And it's been a really difficult year, but it's been incredible to watch God at work. The spaces and the places where we need God most have been uncovered and laid bare in all of our world. And thank God we were prepared. You know, for over two years, we have been talking about the change coming in our world and in our congregation. We gathered together to talk about how we gather with a grant in small groups, about a year's worth of conversation to think about and to practice and to talk about how to gather online. We've had conversations together for almost two years about our financial situation, about wanting and needing to grow, about how to be more faithful to our mission to serve and equip artists. Honestly, I invite you to really think about the way that God blessed and prepared us ahead of COVID. Truly, it is nothing less of than a miracle in, in my estimation. 
I mean, we may not have believed that all of this would really happen, but then came COVID and it became very real, very fast. And of course it hasn't been easy and it hasn't been perfect. And we've struggled to stay connected using only Zoom and learning how to use Zoom. <laughs> and we've missed having coffee together and, and having group time in person. But we've done the best that we could using new technology and expanding our idea of what ministry even looks like. And we've seen new members and new participants and new leadership, increased financial stewardship, stewardship of time and talent. We've seen Anita and Karen and Ken and Rita and Rodney and Trenda and Bruce and Laura and Fox and all the Sunday night volunteers and so many others stepping up into roles of leadership and disciple making that have expanded the capacity and ministry of our church. And so many of you joining us online who wouldn't have been able to otherwise. And you're coming to be with us, not just to find a place of spiritual renewal and refreshment for yourselves, but to become equipped and to prepare you to go out and serve in your own context throughout the week. And I know this, because every week I have conversations with you about the work that you're doing and the ways you're serving God and how it's opening up new avenues for being salt and light in your context. And it's awesome. This is what it means to be church. The church is a vehicle for sending and equipping. And now this last week, we had this incredible opportunity to participate in the ordination council for Amy and Ken. What an incredible blessing. I just can't get over it. I, I said it in the email, I said it at the council. It's incredible to think that uh, um, associate executive director basically of North Star kept saying during the whole thing, how incredible it was to be doing this at a time when statistically and all the reports that are coming in that so many ministers are planning to leave the ministry, are planning to retire early to get out of the business because it's too hard because things have changed too much and they don't know what to do. And here we are in the midst of this really challenging time, the two of you are stepping in to new, as new leaders into ministry in creative and new ways and what an, what an incredible gift that is, what an incredible testament it is to the work that God is doing in our community, how humbling it is to be able to be a part of that. And we're still working out the logistics so that we can uh, do baptism for Rania. I mean, all of these wonderful things are happening. This is what it means to be church. So I want to really open this time tonight. I have some other thoughts and I want to do the creative reflection, but I want to have a time of prayer, a prayer of thanksgiving, because it's important for us to stop and celebrate where God is alive and at work in our community. It's easy to get wrapped up in the things that aren't working exactly the way that we want them to, and those are important, but we have to stop and make sure we're thanking God for what is going well what there is to celebrate and where the life is even in the midst of death and fear. So we're gonna have a, a time of prayer of Thanksgiving. I actually had this service planned for Easter, but it works better to do it online together. So I want us to have a, a prayer of Thanksgiving for one thing that God has done in the life of convergence over this last crazy year, or one thing that God has done in your life through convergence over the last year? How has God blessed you? Or how have you seen God bless others uh, through convergence? How has God used convergence over the last year? And let's pray a prayer of thanksgiving. It can be one word, it could be a sentence, it can be whatever you want. And you can just unmute yourself and we'll just have a, a short prayer time of pop-up prayer just to give thanks for this church community. So let's pray, I'll, I'll open. God, I am so grateful for this group of people and for the creativity <clears throat> that is, is contained in this small community of people. 
and I'm just so grateful for the willingness and the creativity of Dan and Rita and the trustees and the leadership team who have given more of their time and energy and creativity in the last year than they've been called upon to do in the last 14 years and have done it willingly and graciously and generously. I thank you for that leadership and for what that will mean for the future of Convergence. I thank you that Dan has gotten to fulfill a lifelong dream of becoming a filmmaker. Well, Lord, I thank you for the pickle, pickling video. That, Lord, thank you that in a time when other churches were standing with mics in front of podiums, the pickling video happened. Thank you for the ideas. Thank you for the visuals. Thank you for the music. Thank you, Lord, that you prepared them for such a time as this. And thank you for how you're going to continue to work with this peculiar people within a peculiar people. Your purposes with freedom and joy. In Jesus name. And thank you, Lord, seriously, thank you. And Lord, I ask that you would put that, that on a, that it wouldn't be hidden under a lampshade, but that it would be put up where it can be seen. As you prepare to let us be seen by the people that are meant to see us. And let not one be miss it. Lord, thank you. Dora, thank you for the special 2020 and for every um, spiritual collective that I attended. Thank you for Fox and, mm. and Danielle and Elise, for uh, Anita and all the wonderful conversation we had during the class. And also thank you for awakening my passion for arts and clarify my confusion and helping me to finish my first script and gathering all my friends around the world to read for me. And thank you for allowing me to experience you and see the miracle. Thank you. So I'm grateful for Convergence being the only stable presence in my very tumultuous life right now. Um, it is my, our connection with, with the area that we lived before, with the people we used to live with, and, and I feel that we are still with you, even though we are so far away. So. I am very grateful for convergence. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for timing. And it just still blows my mind that my friend knew about convergence for years, never once told me about it until last year. But as I look back and reflect, I wasn't ready 
and just in a good place to be ready for it in 2020. And I thank you so much for finding this community um, of believers who think like me and who have all these great ideas and aren't afraid to be creative and aren't afraid to just look at things differently. And I thank you for the inspiration and encouragement it has been to me. And I thank you for uh, Trenda and Lisa and the way they have invested in me and just um, have been with me and Ken over the past years. We've done this ordination and have wrestled with lots of different questions and calling. And I thank you for the encouragement and for the gentle shelves that they've given us more often than not. And I thank you for a church that believes in us and supports us. And um, I thank you for finding a place where I can bring all of myself to worship and to learn what it is really like instead of have to diminish parts of me to fit in with everybody else. And I thank you that we can worship you in creativity and with art. Um, I would like to thank Conversions um, over the last couple of months um, for the community prayers and creativity through art. That is something different. Um, I am a member, like I said, of any York Baptist, which is part of North Star Church. I guess I forgot how I got um, connected to Convergence. But anyway, it's been very interesting and it's also increasing my prayer life and the creativity with the community. That's something different that um, I'm finding very interesting. I'm learning about it. I'm not an artist, but I, I sit back and watch all of the um, drawings and the connections, how y'all um, operate. So it's a, it's, a, it's a great experience to see how other churches, community, you know, come together, but um, we still believe in the same God and just worship a little bit different. And I appreciate the um, friendliness and um, it's just been great to um, zoom in um, on this. And one day I'll be able to um, attend one of your services just to see, you know, whenever the um, COVID and everything is over. Appreciate it. So Lord, I wanna be thankful uh, for this past year as crazy as it has been and that um, oftentimes a preparation I think can be painful in our lives, no matter what that may be about or what it may be for. But um, this has definitely been a time of preparation. I think Lisa was saying earlier about, you know, all the way back from when the fire came and then when we were getting back together and then COVID hit and, you know, and then, and then for this time for us to be kind of blown apart and yet you have enabled it to be a time of preparation for new stages in so many lives. Uh, in particular, the ways, Lord, I will just focus on and being thankful for the ways in which you worked with uh, Amy and myself um, through convergence uh, with Trenda, walking us through with Lisa, uh, covering us and caring for us in ways that we then this past week had this incredible blessing of ordination through North Star and through uh, our friends and our family at Convergence. And I just, I thank you for that in particular. I also thank, thank you for the collectives um, in which we've had in the past year and the ways in which that has, has just been a, a inspirational way of, of connecting with one another. And, uh, and to, to also providing those healthy rhythms. So I just wanna thank you for that. And, uh, whether the preparation at, at times, it's not always easy, but you are always there. And that Lord has made the difference. I'm thankful for studio space. I'm thankful to have been an arts partner and um, had use of a space where there can be, where there has been healing and growth for clients and my interns. Well, amen.
I, I love that 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 thought, that image, kind of, of a time of preparation, and it is continues to be a time of preparation, <laughs> and it isn't it isn't easy. You know, I said earlier that the church is a vehicle for equipping and for sending. And if you think about in Acts, you see the early, the, the first church, at the very beginning, it talks about they all got together and they shared everything in common. And, you know, they were a very tight knit group of people and they really cared for each other really, really well. And they prayed together and spent all their time together. And then slowly, slowly, they started to expand that circle to care for the people in this in Rome in the in the city and to care for the sick to care for the poor and expand and then it became clearer though that they were to go wider and wider expanding that circle to go to the ends of the earth and we of course share that call as the church and it is not an easy call this being discipled and making disciples is life-changing stuff and does require those, those habits and those patterns, those practices of prayer to surrender ourselves. The way of Jesus is a path that we have to constantly daily choose. And it's a path that we have to constantly choose as a church in order to be the church. One of the truest and hardest things about being in community and about serving and loving others as a whole is this idea of dying to self. I want to put up for us to consider one of these hard sayings of Jesus and then have us reflect creatively. So I'm going to put share my screen again. This is from John 12. He says, the hour has come for the son of man, son of Adam, meaning himself, to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Anyone who loves their life will lose it, while anyone who hates their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, my servant will be also. My father will honor the one who serves me. Now my soul is troubled. What shall I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it was for this very reason that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. There's some pretty intense sayings in there. What does Jesus mean by loving and hating your life? Are we supposed to just hunker down and shun the world while we wait for eternal life? Let's look at this starting backwards, eternal life. Eternal life is not just about life after death. It's a way of living now. Eternal life is life lived in Christ. It equates to wholeness, to fullness, to life as God intends it. Now this, think about this loving your life and hating your life. So loving your life isn't about love and life or being grateful for every day. Of course, we love being alive. We love our lives. We're grateful for our lives. But in this context, what it means is clinging. To love something so hard and so much that we cling to it. Clinging to our expectations. Clinging to our vanities clinging to our presuppositions, clinging to the past and the effects of the past, clinging to our own understanding, clinging to relationships, clinging to how we view ourselves, clinging to our need to be right. What about hating our lives? 
Jesus doesn't mean hating creation or people or life in general. Obviously, God loves those things. He died for the world. What he means by hating your life in this world is hating the way of the world over and against God's way. The way of the world says that someone wins and someone loses, that someone is right and someone else is wrong. Someone's on top and someone else is on the bottom. And the way the world believes to solve those problems is that someone else should win or someone else should be right or on top or whatever. It means to cling to the things we cling to with all our might because we don't trust that God's got it. God's way is to love, to stop clinging. We just studied the Beatitudes. And in the Beatitudes, Jesus says, you are blessed. You're all blessed. I love you all. And you must all die to yourselves. Let go. Stop clinging to whatever it is you're clinging to, good or bad, holy or unholy. The world holds tightly, but my way is lightly. I see your poverty of spirit, your meekness, your desire for purity of heart, and I love you. I bless you. Let go. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now, one way to read this text is that we are the seeds, the kernel of wheat that must die. But another way to think about it is that the seed, that kernel, is what we hold so tightly in our hearts, what we cling to, our idea of what we deserve or how people should treat us or our idea of ourselves or what the past should have been or what the future should be or that thing that if only it came true, everything would be all right or the prayer that if only God would answer, then we would believe and trust. But Jesus tells us that we have to open our hand and uncling, let it die, let it fall to the ground. And what if we think of ourselves as the soil? What if our prayer became to be the soil in which God's will can be done? The soil that's ready to nourish and shelter the dreams of God. And through us, God's dreams may come to fruition. For the glory of God and the benefit of us and all his children. What if we pray to let go of our dreams in order that God's dreams in us, God's perfect dreams, can bear fruit? Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now we're gonna take some time for creative reflection. I'm gonna ask you to take a piece of paper and write, draw, doodle, color, whatever it is, and pray and ask God, what do I need to release? What do I need to uncling to, to let die in order to make room for God's dream in my heart? Now, I'm going to say maybe what you dream and long for is exactly what God intends. 
but what will you do if not? Is there room for God's expanded vision in your heart? God's expanded vision for your life, for our church? Are you willing to let go in order for so many more seeds to be produced, for God's dream to bear fruit? I have a lot of things that I cling to personally and for convergence. And God's made it really clear that I have to uncling. I have to be uninvested in the outcome in order to make room in my heart for what God wants to do in our midst. So I'm gonna invite you to take some time to write, doodle, crayon, whatever on your piece of paper, could be a word, could be a sentence, asking God, what do I need to uncling to? What do I need to let go of? And this is a very deeply personal exercise, so we will not be sharing these. So feel free to write whatever you want, and then we'll come back together and we're gonna do something with that piece of paper. So let's take some time now. So hopefully, I mean, if you've been journaling, that's, that's fine. Maybe you can just write on a little sheet of paper, just one sentence or a word that signifies what you need, what you like to uncling to 
to release in order to make room for God, God's dream in your life and in our church. And here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to take that piece of paper and rip it out of your notebook if you can. That's why I said, if you wanna grab another sheet of paper and just write down a word, that's fine. And I want you to crumple it up. I want you to crumple it up as tight as you can, like down to the size of a kernel of wheat or a seed. Get it as tight as you can. And I want you to crumple it in your hand as tightly as you can and cling on to that thing as tightly as you can with all your might and everything you got. And then let's pray. Unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground, it remains only a single seed. And now let's release that paper and let it fall to the ground as we pray. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. Now we've got a lot of decisions to make this coming year. We got a lot to figure out. We got a lot to learn about how to be church again in person and how to be church online as COVID ends. The landscape is very different than it was a year ago, but God's dreams are big and he is faithful. So let's pray that we are willing to release and uncling in order that God's dreams in us may come to fruition. Now, I want to close tonight by turning it back over to you again to close with a time of pop-up prayer, of blessing. I'd like for us to pray together through words and sentences and prayers, whatever comes to you, a prayer of blessing for the church at large and specifically for convergence for the year to come, that God's dreams would be fulfilled in us. Let's pray. And you can just start. Lord, we come to you in a time of, of new beginning, of freshness and new life this spring and new life uh, as we walk out of pandemic and we thank you that you carried us through and that you will continue to carry us through we thank you for the artists that are gathered here that are so talented and so gifted through your grace and we thank you lord that those artists were willing to share this past year uh, in times when we didn't know what direction to go. People like Kathy, who was willing to do Lectio and Anita, who was always willing to jump in and Karen with their wisdom and help others and show us the way by their example. And I thank you for a special time for people like Ken and Amy to have a year to work through their calling and they had a place to do this at Convergence and people who love them and support them. And I just thank you for that, Lord, that you made that way clear. What a privilege and what an honor to walk beside them. Lord, I wanna thank you for the opportunities that you have given to all of us who shared through leadership and that Lisa's willing to allow uh, to share in that and that she's a, a willing to groom and cheer on people to be part of uh, a team and also new beginnings to do new things all the time. Thank you that we have a place that people can teach, Lord, and that they can share and that they can collaborate. That's a big thing in the church, Lord, to be able to do that and to be able to do it freely. We thank you for that. And Lord, spiritual collectives, we thank you for Zoom and the opportunity to have a way to do it. Thank you. It's been a blessing. 
And we look forward to all that you've prepared ahead of us and you've laid it out and we don't even know what it is, but you've got it ready and you've planted the seeds and just let us be able to sow them. We thank you, Lord, for convergence. How can you be further apart and come closer together? That's what you did here this year, Lord. Thank you that against reason and logic from anything one would expect, you made something different and something good and something we're all, I don't want to say better for, but I can't find the word for it, but you helped us. You made us love each other better when we were apart. Thank you, Lord, for fine-tuned ears that hear what the Father shows them in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for how you know the beginning and you know the end. And you don't make any mistakes and nothing takes you by surprise. And so I thank you for the gift of community, both near and far, in person on Zoom. And I thank you for like-minded individuals that you, um, in your infinite wisdom, you bring together. God, um, it just amazes me that the body of Christ, when we are doing what you are requiring us to do, that it happens and it happens so well. And so Lord, I thank you for convergence. I thank you for being able to be a part of something that is new, different and necessary in being able to uh, advance your kingdom in this way. Uh, Lord, I ask a special blessing over Lisa and the leadership of this ministry and that you would continue to open eyes and mind and hearts to be able to see exactly what, what you're doing and what you're calling convergence to and for. So Lord, we like new things, but at the same time, new things can make us uncomfortable. And so God, I ask that in your infinite wisdom that you would make some good uncomfortable feelings come as a result of what you're going to do in this ministry and the ministry you're calling it to in the days ahead. Lord, you know the beginning, you know the end. We see in part, but we are expecting great and marvelous things to happen because your word is so clear that when two or three are gathered, and Lord, there's way more than two or three in this call and in the ministry that you're calling forth. And so we're expecting great things. So I thank you. I thank you that paths have crossed. I thank you for my friend Trenda and just 
introducing me to this ministry. And I just am so excited to see what you were going to do and where it's going to go. So I thank you, God, for what you're doing amongst my brothers and sisters here with Convergence. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'm sorry to hit in again, but when I first came to Convergence, I remember thinking of cathedrals being built by the people. And I thought, <clears throat> I thought that Convergence somehow made me think of cathedrals being built. And I just thought about Acts and I thought about what happened this year. And I thought, I thought that we were supposed to be selling art and Christianity as a concept. I thought we were, I can't say the word proselytize that word. That's what I thought we were supposed to do. But what happened was people just started building. People just started making shoulder to shoulder. And it was like ax and that's what's happening. We're, something's being, we're doing. It's not up high looking down. So thank you, Lord, for the cathedral. We're building to your glory, we hope, in Jesus' name and to your honor. All glory to God, for he is truly faithful. Amen. Amen. And I am so grateful for all of you and for this journey that we are walking on together. And so excited to see what God will do next in and through you and us and the church as a whole. I just, I pray that this is a gift and a wake up call and a time of new excitement and a new enthusiasm. So thank you for, for encouraging each other and for being there for each other and for serving one another. You have meant so much to one another during this time, I will tell you. And I believe there's so much more to come. So God bless you. Have a wonderful week. I'll see you next week for the second part in our series on being church. We'll look at our value statement, do some really creative and fun things for evaluation. And then in May, we have coming up as I mentioned earlier, Adrian Reedy is going to be leading us through the art of re, and we'll, we'll have some more information about that coming up soon. So thank you all. Have a wonderful day, a wonderful weekend, wonderful week. Bye. Bye. Good Bye. night.